recording. No, that's my phone. Oh, sorry. Guys, you can't lean on the rug because that's where I put the things. That is good why you point. have clipboards. That's a good point. That's a good point. Okay, guys. So, Egypt. So, we're remember, we're looking at, this is what you guys are going to do for your ancient civilizations. We are looking at the fundamental needs of humans. And we're answering those questions for our society. So one of the fundamental needs of humans is communication. Yes. Oh, well, I was going to say one of the needs. Yeah. Okay. I was going to say one of the needs. Okay, what's another need? Um, food, water, sunlight, um, shelter. You're thinking of needs of life, which is correct. But food is one that we include. Transportation. Yeah. Okay, whoa, it's fine. We include um, water in that, okay? All right, but what we're looking at right now is communication. It is a fundamental need of humans to communicate with each other, right? We evolved to communicate. So for our civilization, ancient Egypt, how do they communicate? Besides like talking in Egypt. Writing. Writing, what kind of writing do they use? What is it like? Hieroglyphics. Hieroglyphics. It looks like this. Yeah, I love hieroglyphics. I know, they're really, really cool. <gasps> okay, can we see this one? And they go, and they go, and sometimes they go We're down. We're going to talk about that. Down. We're going to talk about that, but I need to be the one to take this lesson. Okay. okay. This is what hieroglyphics look like. Um, you guys asked when we gave our initial, like when I we were talking about, right? Oh, you need to know how to spell it. Trish's best. Um, no, actually, I'm just going to put this up for you guys to see it's right here. Hieroglyphics. Should I put in the thing, the different This is just a different font. Just right the word. Okay. This is hieroglyphics. That's how you spell it. And I'm going to take this away because it has nothing to do with like this is the follow up work. But, okay. You have to, like, write down, like, guys, you're taking notes. I have already answered the question and said that you can write down what is interesting, but this is a listen lecture. Okay. We're going to start over and you are going to be respectful and listen. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. Hieroglyphics communication. All right. You guys asked um, when we did our original Egypt lecture. How we know what they say. Remember who asked that? I don't. But I, I think did, I, you, did you ask? No, that was Eleanor. Oh, could, could be Eleanor. This is how we know. It is called the Rosetta Stone. It was discovered in 1799, but it was created in 196 BCE. And here is what is so amazingly awesome about this. The Rosetta Stone has one decree written three times in three different languages, one right after the other. Hieroglyphics on top. Dem Demotic, which is the um, like written fast Egyptian language in the middle. Greek on the bottom. And we know what Greek We know Greek. Yeah. That means that we could, since we know exactly what it said, What's because it we know Greek, the Rosetta Stone. Because we know Greek and we know exactly what it said, we can figure out what demotic and hieroglyphics say. That's how we cracked the code of hieroglyphics it's using the Rosetta Stone. I actually have a picture of this is a close up. You guys can pass it around and you can see the hieroglyphics on top, the demotic in the middle, and the Greek in on the bottom. And I just printed out a little picture. This is just a fragment. This is what it looked like when they originally made it. It was made to be a big, huge pillar that would like stand up somewhere where people could go read the decree um, and, you know, in whatever language they preferred. So we have this little fragment here. Was that how I find out the Greeks? What? Remember, I find that it seems like they weren't right, like, you know, Greek, but it was just 
No, that's a really good question. At this time in 196 BCE, you remember I said we kind of stopped talking about the Egyptians long before this, but like a thousand when we ended the new kingdom and they were conquered by the Assyrians. But remember I said that there was kind of this like Roman Egyptian, um, Friendship. like a full on right. empire, Roman Egyptian together. Oh, okay. I was and, just wondering. Right. They, don't they used Greek as the language of their court. Like this was the administrative language was Greek at that time. Oh. So that's why it's written in Greek. Demotic was just the language of like commerce and what people like actually spoke in, written down. And then hieroglyphs so is like, this. So fast language, yep. writing like, like, our, like our cursive. Yes, like cursive, it, exactly like cursive. And, and it's also what they speak. Hieroglyphs were known as the language of the gods. They were real fancy and you use them to say very important things like what your god came to in his life. Hieroglyphs developed over a really long period of time. When they first developed, they look like this. These are like proto hieroglyphic symbols, meaning like they're before hieroglyphics. Prototype. Yeah, kind of like a prototype, right? It's before the thing is actually made. Can you hold this up for the a camera? Pilot. Yeah, that's what I did for that one. Thank you. It's Perfect. Kind of like a pilot. Sorry. That's okay. It's kind of like a it is like a pilot, right? So this is originally when people were first coming up with ways to communicate. We talked about this in our first, in our great lesson like a long time ago. Um, they communicated with pictures. That's what these are. They're pictures, right? And they're pictures that stand for words. Then the next step was like having pictures that were combined to stand for ideas. So like I could have a picture of a mouth and a picture of a bowl, and I could have that mean eating. Right, because like the mouth is getting the food from the. I think that was that bowl, like that handle of bowl, like a bowl that holds. Food. Yeah, yeah, that was. The okay, yes. so we go from like these, just like pictures of things, to these idea <laughs> pictures, and then the next step is like having a actual form. Not quite. It is a picture that stands for a sound. Okay, so we what start with these Egyptian. Egyptian. Oh, okay. Does anyone know how to? Yes, because of this. Well, not me. Right, we don't. This class. Right, correct. No one here knows how to. Henry, did you have a question? Okay. I did have something um, to say, though, about this. Okay. Okay, so um, is it because some people knew how to speak Greek and the same thing was written in all three languages? Yes. And, um, it said the same thing on all three languages. Exactly. And people could understand Greek and they know what it said from Greek. So they knew what it said there and they could understand the hieroglyphs. And some people knew Greek so they could tell them. So the Greek people could tell other people how to like. It's actually, so when we translated this, we found this in 1799 CE, right? So that's relatively recently when we're talking about like the period of human history. Mm -hmm. um, but scholars know Greek. There are many people today who know how to read ancient you know Greek. Greek. I know, no, but I know Greek some. Yes. Scholars know ancient Greek, okay? People who study this. I know some modern Greek. Right. And um, I, if someone knows how they go to the store and read Greek. Okay, but scholars know ancient Greek. They then could take that and trans they could say like, okay, if this means the same as this, then we can figure out what these symbols mean. Okay, all right. So from our kind of proto hieroglyph symbols, you can see looking at this, these are really early hieroglyphs. They were found in the tomb of King Menes, which if you remember, he is the guy who starts the old kingdom, who unified upper and lower Egypt. Well, I mean, I mean, he conquered places is not gonna be the nicest probably. You can pass that around and see kind of how my, different they are. And then, okay. I've thrown this away in Washington. <laughs> you guys are having a rough time. Okay, this is actually the first full sentence in hieroglyphs. It was written 
between 2,700 and 2,600 BCE. This is the first full sentence. I'm going to ask you to put that away. Okay, first full sentence. I'm going to come up here. Try to. Show, because it's really kind of hard to see, but can you see the um, actual carvings here? It's very faded because, you know, it's kind of that's the first full sentence we have. Right. But what you guys are probably used to seeing is more like this. Yeah. Right? Carved huge on temple walls. I've never seen a pyramid, but I've always wanted to. Likewise. I but have. I've seen lots of pictures of them. That is a big old pyramid. Yeah. Okay, but we're talking about like sure. us seeing it in person. But we've seen pictures of it. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. There were actually three different kinds of hieroglyphs. There were some that um, stood for, like a picture stood for that thing. So I could have a picture of a cat and that meant cat. Okay. That was one kind of hieroglyph. Then there were the idea hieroglyphs that could be like the picture of the mouth and the bowl. And that meant eat. Or a cat that meant arrogant because cats are arrogant. What does arrogant mean? Oh, arrogant, mean? it means like they're really, um, they think they're real great. Because they are. All cats think they're real great. Yeah, because or, they're not all of them. Okay, moving on. Or, and it, could, or it could mean a sound. So you could have a picture of a cat. And it meant because cat starts with the sound. Or you could have a picture of a cat, and it could mean meow because cats say meow. That might be too, right? When so, what we're going to do, guys? That looks like a charging bowl. Right, it does look like a charging bowl, and it probably that's what it means. Oh wait, it's a bull butt. Oh yeah. So that's because the picture of the cat that's special. Yeah. So guys, 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 this is a writing. It is not just a like a cave painting picture. It's not artwork. It is a writing. So it is not a picture of a bullfight. Even though I know that's what it looks like. Okay, these are the letters, guys. We have broken down what the letter sounds look like, or yeah, what the symbols are for the letter sound. Um, hieroglyphs, this is a phonetic language. That means that we are talking about like the way that it sounds. So you will notice, for example, that I'm looking through here. F and where's V? F and V, do you see that the hieroglyphs are the same? This little like snake guy. Oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. That's because F and V are the same sound. Say F. F. No, like the sound. You know how that sounds in your mouth or how that feels in your mouth? Mm -hmm. Say V. Say a V sound. Mm -hmm. That one sounds same shape in your mouth. Mm -hmm. So they put that as the mm -hmm. same hieroglyph. It is the same sound. Even the though, like, what is voiced? And one is not voiced. That's how we say it when we're talking about phonetics. But so, so there's there's several that are like this. I think that O and U might be the same. I'm trying to remember U. No, O isn't, but anyway, there are other ones that are the same as well. Oh, U and W because those are pretty similar. You and what, uh, what, uh, it's just yeah, see. Okay. Uh, w is here. Nope, here. That was an X. Oh, and X is. Wait. And then where? So like the little cup looking guy, which is not. I mean, the word for cup was different. So. But. Yeah, I know. You know why? Because C can say or depending on how we do it, right? So if you're doing a sound, it's going to be this thing that looks a little like a cup. If you're doing a 
sound. It's going to look a little like a snake. Yep, because that's the same sound, right? So it's phonetic. It's based on the way it sounds, and um, yeah, it's based on the way it sounds. Okay, hieroglyphs. Then, oh, I have five minutes to get through the rest of this. Holy cannoli! Let's go fast. We talked about how there is this kind of like written language that was used by scribes called demotic. The earlier form of this was called hieratic. You don't need to know these terms, but what happens, these are the hieroglyphs. If you write them real fast on paper, can you see how they change? But it looks, you can see the change in the evolution. Hieroglyph, demotic, right? You can see the way it changes. That's what's happening. They're writing the hieroglyphs real fast on paper. And so that is where the hieratic English or hieratic written language comes from, and then later demotic. Whoa. Whoa. I know it's really cool. Um, I have a couple pictures of hieratics so you guys can see them. They're gonna be on the shelf for you to look at. But here's a couple pictures of written hieratics. This is on papyrus, which is rare to find because papyrus oh. like breaks down. It's organic. And this is um, painted Wait, what's on, papyrus? we're gonna talk about that in just a second. Is papyrus like We're gonna talk about that in just a second. I thought you guys would appreciate what this one says. It's from the reign of Amenhotep the first, who we talked about a little bit. And it says, be on your guard against all who are subordinate to you. Trust no brother, no no friend, make no intimates. I am not any of your friends. It means it's lonely at the top. Like that. Okay. Okay, that's really mean. <laughs> it's not rude. It's careful. Okay. It's not meant to be rude. And it's not saying like you're better. Well, it is saying you're better than everyone because they literally thought he was a god. So like. Yeah, he's better. But um, it's not saying be mean to people, it's saying don't trust people. That's it. Okay. Guys, they wrote on papyrus. This is what papyrus looks like. Wait, who said that? Who was the person? I'm in hot Okay, I'm going to put that one on the It's a plant. It's a reed that grows near water. Near water. Specifically, sugar. Cane. Which river? Not sugar cane. What river? No, the, the, that's the like Nile. A, right, that's exactly. Like papyrus said that. This is papyrus. It is the name of the plant. Is papyrus more like We are not talking about that right now. We are talking about this plant, papyrus. Right now, we're trying to finish this lesson in approximately three minutes. Thanks. This is papyrus, guys. They made this into, it's not like true paper, the way, because it's not made the same, um, but they made this into kind of paper. Here's how they did it. They took the reed here. They split it open very carefully. They took off the outside and used the inside part. Then they had this really narrow um, strip of plant matter. They laid a whole bunch of them together and they hammered it like crazy until the pulp broke down and then they dried it and it turned into papyrus paper. Not paper. They called it the, the writing thing, the thing that they wrote on like paper, is also called papyrus. So the plant is papyrus, and the thing they wrote on is papyrus. This is a picture from the tomb of a priest of people making papyrus out of papyrus. This guy's carrying it in, carrying in all these reeds. This guy is stripping it, like cutting it in half and pulling out the little pieces. And I thought you guys would appreciate seeing something written on papyrus. Papyrus breaks down because it's organic, right? It's made of plants. So like if papyrus was stored in like wet Europe, it would last maybe decades. Like not even, it wouldn't last very long. 
in Egypt where it's real dry, except mm -hmm. for right along the Nile, mm -hmm. it lasts for a long time. So we have fragments of papyrus that are thousands of years old. This one is a receipt for a donkey, <laughs> which I appreciate. <laughs> So like we have this ancient, ancient, amazing thing that's lasted forever. And it just says, I, Joe, sell my donkey to Bob Frank for $80. <laughs> or that's, something like that. Something Maybe like that. Someday, someday people are going to buy that. Like right, they'll be like, years. oh my gosh, guys, look, a receipt from Walmart. Yeah. Or hot there you go. Okay, hieroglyphs. Let me show you what your follow up work is. Oh, wait, one more thing. Sorry. In addition to, you yeah, know, well, letters and stuff. Here's a receipt for a dumpling. Here's a receipt for a dumpling. Okay, in addition to letters, Egyptians also recorded numbers. I think, did we actually do the great lesson of numbers? I can't even remember. Yeah. Okay, we talked a little bit about that. Uh, first, that um, like in week two or something. Yeah. These are Egyptian numbers. This is like a reed, or some people say it's a knuckle bone. It's but it's like a little thing. Gold. It's also nemesis. No, not from a person, man. Okay, because like when you're counting things, it's real easy to say, I have one pencil, I have two pencils. Someone else give me a pencil. Um, okay. I have three pencils and I'm gonna lay them out, right? Okay, so no, it's all right. Knuckle um, bone. Or knuckle bones, right? So up until I get to nine, it's these knuckle bones. Then at 10, I can't remember what this is supposed to be. It's like a, a bench thingy. We can look that up. I don't remember. That one start. actually is a knuckle bone. So every 10, if I have like three of these bed things, what is that going to be? Three 30. groups of 10. It's going to be 30, right? 100 is a read. So if I have three of these reeds, what's that going to be? Um, 300. A thousand is a lotus flower. That's a lotus. I like lotus. Lotus flower. It looks a little bit like a Mario flower in this particular yeah. thing. Yeah. Call it a lotus, lotus seeds are in Zelda. Yes. 10,000 is a bent finger. I don't it's know why. I'm sure world. that people yes. know the answer to this, but I do not. A hundred thousand. Can anyone tell what this thing is? That's a frog. It is a frog. No, a hundred thousand is a frog. <laughs> and a million? Oh, I know. Guy praise me to the guy. I know. I think it is. What do you think, Henry? Is it a is it someone sacrificing themselves to the gods? They didn't have human sacrifice, so no. Really? But really. But um, some, so I saw a couple different things on this. I'm sure that scholars know the answer to this, but what the internet told me is either it is a surprised person or a goddess or someone worshiping a goddess. I'm sure scholars know. We can look it up. A surprised person. I kind of like the idea yeah. of a, a million being a person going, what? <laughs> I just think that's pretty fun. But, um, but I don't think that's actually I, I, I think it's funny because it's it's looking at the fog wall. It's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so these are numbers. Well, the frog Here's, is the size of the human. That would be surprising. Same with the Here is your follow-up work, guys. Oh, I don't have them back yet. Yeah, but, guys, we've got like a minute. Can we hold it together for a minute more? Ned, put your bottom down, man. Yeah? Thanks. Okay. The things people will see on this video. One, Nikki is, is laminating right now some work where you guys can figure out, like basically translate numbers. Okay. So you're going to have, hey, we'll be done in just a second, I promise. Um, we're going to have, you'll have like three reeds and four knuckle bones and you're going to tell me what that number is okay number two crack the code Ooh. it's your own little rosetta stone 
Yay! You've got your key. You're going to translate this. I know, it's awesome. All right. Ears are bleeding. Three. This is called a cartouche. We were going to talk about it, but we don't really have time. What people would do with this is they would write their names on it. This is um, names would be surrounded, and you can see this in hieroglyphs. If you guys look at these, you'll find this in here. I guarantee it. Um, names would be surrounded by these circles. It is called a cartouche. Trace this on paper and write your name in it in hieroglyphs. Decorate it however you want. I will do a demo of this, maybe while you guys are in yoga, so you can see what I'm talking about. Lyric made a good point earlier that I forgot to talk about. Hieroglyphs can be written up and down, which is how they're written in cartouches, or they can be written right to left, or they can be written left to right. Egyptians didn't care. They, they just, just they like, throw them. Oh, I'll just carve a few hieroglyphs, and they were like, it couldn't be like, here's a letter here and a letter here and a letter here, like they went in order, but it could be left to right, right to left, up to down. Yeah, but for names, it was up to down. Could it be down hey. to up? I don't think so, but that's a good question. Maybe Last thing. Yeah. Guys, I have literally had this since I was your age. It is. So fun. I tried it when I didn't know what it was. Hieroglyphic stamps. Yep. You can stamp your names. You can make uh, make messages I to each other. Wondering what that looks I know it's been on the shelf. It's got the letters on here. It's also got, remember I said that hieroglyphs could be pictures that meant things. These could all mean the things that they were or the letters. So like this guy here is a B. Also, it's a foot. Wow. Okay, so you can use this to write messages to each other. And the last thing I wanted to show you, so you guys are going to be doing this for your civilization. You're going to find this information. The internet is a great resource, but better resources are books. So I've got this. You can learn as much as you want to about hieroglyphs because I've got this. That's super distracting. You, you, that's distracting. Okay. Um, I've got this on the shelf for you. You can learn a whole lot more about hieroglyphs by looking in this book. And that's what, when you guys are doing your own civilization, you're going to start with the books because then you're going to have a basis to go to the internet. Okay. All right. Miss Vanessa is waiting for you. You can wave to Cassie and Cameron, and then we're going to go and show Bye, Cassie. Bye, Cameron. Bye, Cassie and Cameron. Yo, see yo later. See yo later. Bye. Don't you miss us and our chaotic lessons? I know you do. Hey, yo. Guys, I'm going to turn off the camera now. I know.